Hey y'all, Coach and Fire guys, stay with me. Hey y'all. And we're looking at the calendar here for the fall of the year 2023, and we're coming up on what festival, Stacy? Hanukkah. The Feast of Dedication. And in today's video, we want to talk about cleansing in preparation of this Feast of Dedication. Mm -hmm. Now, in this video, we'll be talking particularly about the Levites, but all and everybody can and should take part in, in this sanctification or this cleansing. Okay. And in the video, it's a short video. And at the end, we'll talk about some ways we could do it. Right. Right. And the video is a little bit rushed because some of this takes actually a week. Well, you and Christian did a very good job of explaining it. And uh, the reason why I showed the calendar, we're here on January the 6th. And so we have a short period of time if we wanted to um, go through the week-long process before the Day of Remembrance on the 13th. Okay. Yeah, so that's why we wanted to hurry up and get this video out. Hey, y'all. Coach and Fight here. Got Chris with me. Hey, y'all. And in this class, we want to talk particularly the sanctification of the Levi's. Mm -hmm. You know who the Levi's are, Chris? Those are the firstborn. The firstborn of each family. Turns out the way our father has set his way of doing things is to have a firstborn, a child within every home or a, or a person within the, every home in charge of, uh, like it talks about here in First Chronicles chapter 15 and uh, verse 12, to bring up the ark of the Lord. Right. You know, right. This is a big deal. Of course, back then it was a literal ark that they could see, mm -hmm. but now they still have the same charge. For the spiritual ark. Exactly. So we just wanted to talk about a few of these verses here. Um, verse 14 is also talking about the Levites, but it mentions the priest as well. Mm -hmm. But look here at uh, chapter 29 and verse 5, if you would read that one. And said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. See, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the ark. Right. This is why it's their responsibility because before they ever would touch the ark, it was their responsibility to sanctify themselves. Right. Right. And then, you know, of course, when we look over at Malachi in chapter three, how it talks about, you know, he would start with the Levites in the end times. Mm -hmm. Well, he's also talking about this, how they will be sanctified first. Right. And, you know, before everybody else will get to partake. But now this is down here in chapter 29 of Second Chronicles. Um, I think in verse 30, we start to get an idea of what's actually going on. Look, read th verse 30. Moreover, Hezekiah, the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and of Espath, the seer. And they sang praises with gladness and they bowed their heads and worshiped. Now, I find that interesting because of what we know happens in chapter 30. Mm -hmm. This is talking about Hezekiah, that same king who brought all of the congregation back together for the first time. Right. Um, the, the 10 tribes plus the two tribes uh, that was with Judah. He brought them back together for second Passover. Mm -hmm. First time they were reunited. Absolutely. And when you look here in chapter 30, down there in about verse 3, you see why it was that they kept second Passover. Mm -hmm. It was because the Levites and the priests had, had not sanctified themselves yet. Right. So that's why it's, it's so important. And that's what's actually going on here. Nehemiah 12 and 47. And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave the portions of the singers and the porters every day his portion. And they sanctified holy things unto the Levites, and the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. So now this, you fast forward all the way up to the second temple. Right. This is Zerubbabel and Nehemiah. Um, but they're doing the same process, seems like. Mm -hmm. Let's look down here in chapter 13. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves, and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. 
All right, so that's Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 22. And we can dig down and see exactly what date has occurred on, but let's keep going. Ezekiel 48 and 11. It shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. Okay, now this is real deep right here, because even though a lot of people are... Um, Levites, um, these Zadoks are, um, narrows it down. Let me just say that. Okay, you, you study about who the Zadok priests are. And the Zadok Levites. The thing about those guys is their offering and their sacrifices are accepted in the end times. Mm -hmm. Probably just before everybody else's. But we'll save that for another study of uh, 44 was also talking about the Levites in the sanctuary. But I believe the main verse that I want to look at is over here in Leviticus chapter eight. We're going to drop down here to the end of the chapter. Um, let's let's look at verse 33. And ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in seven days, but until the days of your consecration be at an end for seven days shall he consecrate you. You see back up there at um, verse 31 that he's talking about the sons of Aaron. Right. So that would be the Levites. So once again, he's talking about the sanctification. Right. Now look down at verse 34 and 35. As he hath done this day, so the Lord hath commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. Therefore, ye shall abide at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation day and night seven days and keep the charge of the Lord. Yet ye die not, for so I am commanded. So here you get an atonement. Right. Or the Levites are getting an atonement and it's taking seven days mm -hmm. that they are to abide by the tabernacle. And then you see it says that they will not die. Right. Because what happens if they go close to that tabernacle? too close and they're not sanctified you know it's just like trying to climb the mountain back there when they was getting the covenant you know they, they, something was going to happen yeah you know so but now it's talking about a spiritual death mm -hmm. but my point in all of this is that this stuff is necessary right you know not everybody knows you know and you know we could go through this whole chapter. I would suggest you go through this whole chapter. I'm not going to go through this whole chapter. Um, in this video, it would have to be a video that stands alone because it, um, it's got a lot of information, but you see in verse six, that is talking about, um, wash them with water. Mm -hmm. I will mention that, that, you know, one of the ways, probably the main way that we get sanctified nowadays is through baptism. Right. So, and it also talks about oil in here. We read about that in the book of James, mm -hmm. um, where it talks about how when you're sick to go to the elect and have them to pray of you and put oil on you. Mm -hmm. And it says that that oil uh, takes away the sin or something like that. Well, that's another way of sanctifying our priests and our Levites now. Right. Right. So we want to, I know this video is kind of rushed and put up here, but we wanted to get this out because now we start this process. Mm-hmm. Start the cleansing. What'd you think about all this thing? Oh, I think it was a great video. Um, you know, given the understanding of what has to be done and, um, you know, now that we have directions, I think we, you know, we can proceed forward. So, yeah. And, and it's the, the sanctification process. One thing that should stand out is that it is necessary that we be clean when we approach the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we didn't stress that much is washing our feet and stuff before we expect to enter these holy places. Right. Even though they're in our bedroom, they are still holy nonetheless, because the spirit is with us when we enter this third temple. Right. Yeah, it was a um, a practice that, you know, Hamashiach pre used and all of the other prophets. And it was just a practice that was done um, throughout the whole time. Matter of fact, you guys check out this other video now on washing the feet before the uh, communions and all of that. Hey, y'all. Coach in the fight here. Got Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about washing your feet. Okay should be a very informative class. 
Yep, we're going to talk about the importance of washing your feet. We're going to talk about why the Messiah washed the disciples' feet. And we're even going to talk about why we should be doing the same thing. Okay. Now, the first place we're going to come over and talk about is in John chapter 13, verses 5 through 14. This is where we hear about the Passover celebration in the book of John, that communion festival where they partook in the wine and the bread. Mm -hmm. Well, we see in verse 5 that the Messiah, before they are having this communion, is actually washing the disciples' feet. Right. Mm -hmm. He actually surprised them a little bit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you would, go ahead and read verse 5. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So here you have all of these men around. They're in the upper room. They have already killed the Passover lamb and probably done the processing. But you have the Messiah who has put a towel around his waist and is now washing their feet. Right. And look what Peter says. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? So Peter has a problem with this, but then look at verse 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now. But you shall know that hereafter. So you have to remember that the Messiah was setting the example for the rest of us. Right. So in this case, he actually didn't explain to them what he was doing, but he told them later on, you're going to understand. Mm -hmm. I think it's by way of this video that most of us are going to understand. Okay. Matter of fact, read verse 8. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, Thou hast no part with me. So here is an important part of this story here. We hear this story many times as people think about why it was that the Messiah bowed down and washed these men's feet. Right. Mm -hmm. But you notice that part right there where he says, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part in me. Yes. Mm -hmm. For an explanation of this, we could come back to the book of Exodus in chapter 30, where we read about Aaron, the mm -hmm. high priest. Right. We understand that the Messiah is now the high priest. Yes. Well, we're seeing here a commandment that tells the priests to wash their feet. If you would, read verse 21. So they shall wash their hands and their feet, that they die not. And it shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. So here you have a basin of water set outside the tabernacle. Which, you know, we refer to as the laver of water. This was a place for the Levites and the priests to actually wash their hands and feet before they were allowed to go into the holy place. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Messiah was saying when he told them that if you don't get your feet washed, you have no part in me. Okay. Because you look back over there in Exodus. It says that if they don't wash their feet, then they're going to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was going on here with the Messiah was that he knew that this marriage supper would take these disciples into a holy place. Okay. And it was necessary for them to have their feet washed before they went into this holy place or they would have suffered a spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, their spirit man may have been shut down and not been able to communicate as it would have if it were in a clean state. Yeah. Yeah. When in the Old Testament, we see when Aaron and his sons would have went in there, they would probably have physically died. But in the New Testament, we are more talking about spiritual. Deaths. Yeah, it would have been a spiritual death. If you would read a verse 31 out of chapter 40. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. So every time these people went into the holy place, they always washed their feet. Mm -hmm. And that makes it make sense that the Messiah was actually washing these people's feet before the Passover supper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to come back to that. Let's come over to the book of Jubilees, chapter 21. And we're going to look down in verse 15. Observe this commandment and do it, my son, that thou mayest be upright in all thy deeds. Now, this is something you was talking about yesterday, so you may have some additional comments to add here. But if you will, read verse 16. 
And at all times be clean in thy body, and wash thyself with water before thy approaches to offer on the altar. And wash thy hands and thy feet before thou drawest near to the altar. And when thou art done sacrificing, wash again thy hands and thy feet. So here again, we see that it is necessary to wash our feet from the book of Jubilees. Yeah, in the Third Testament, it tells us, I believe it's chapter 32, and I think it's lesson 142, where it tells us that our bodies are important that our bodies are and our spirit man they complement each other the body is not more important than the spirit man the spirit man is more important so our bodies are very important though sometimes we think of ourselves as filthy rags and all this our bodies is still very important the father uses them uh, in a very great way so it is necessary for us to take care of our bodies so that our spirit man can do the job that it was sent down here to do right the third testament refers to the body as our robe for yeah. our spirit mm -hmm. yeah and that's what the scripture is talking about when it says that their robes were washed by the blood of the lamb mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now let's come over and briefly look in ephesians chapter 5 Chapter 5 and 27 says that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Well, this brings us back to John in chapter 13. If you would read verse 10. Jesus said unto him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. So how many times have we went and decided that we was going to wash up and didn't bother to wash our feet? Right. Mm -hmm. So what we're being told here is that we can't miss out and not wash our feet. We have to include that in our cleansing. Otherwise, we're not all the way clean. Right. And what we saw over there in Ephesians it is necessary for us to be fully clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the way this all work is we'll wash our feet before we partake in the communion festival. Mm -hmm. And shalom. Shalom. All right. So as I said earlier, I'm a student of the word just like you. The difference is I study on YouTube so everybody can see my Bible studies. In this class, it was quite surprising to learn how much the first day of the first month has to do with cleansing. So, let's talk more on cleansing. We understand that the way that we cleanse the tabernacle is through baptism. So, let's step down through here and look at a few verses associated with baptism. All right now, I'm over here in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. This is John the Baptist speaking here, speaking about the Messiah. John the Baptist is telling that the people of Judea and Jerusalem, the whole town came out to be baptized by him. How this baptism, which seems that John the Baptist invented, it was through that water with a repentant heart that all of the previous sins that had been committed by the individual were able to be washed away and cleansed away. Now, for some hearing this, they're going to believe that you can only be baptized in a church. Well, I don't believe that requirement was of the scripture because when you look at Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 he says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost this is the Messiah talking to all of us this is called the Great Commission and it's not just given to pastors or preachers it's given to everyone all of the children of the Father telling all of us to baptize people. So being baptized down at the church, although it may be convenient, it's not necessary. 
Down here in chapter 8 and verse 16, making a relationship between the Holy Ghost, you see in verse 15, and being baptized in the name of the Messiah there in, in verse 16. Down here at 19, talking about how they were baptized in the name of the Messiah and uh, how they received the Holy Ghost down there in uh verse 6 the the reasons for being baptized again are piling up one we may have been baptized in the wrong name two we may not have received this holy ghost or this spirit of wisdom or the, the this comforting spirit that we were promised three we were, did not have a repentant heart or four we have somehow soiled ourselves since we got baptized the first time and probably five or six other reasons that I can't think of right now on how the reasons for getting rebaptized are starting to outweigh the ones to not be baptized again. But whatever we decide to do, getting off to a clean start maybe should be the thing. But our primary goal should be the purification of our sanctuary, cleaning out that inner court, making ourselves ready for the temple of God to fall upon mankind. Shalom.